Mr. Polyev, I have to name you for disregarding the authority of the chair. I've never seen anything like this, Vashi. Never in my career have I seen such, in my view, blatant partisanship from a speaker. Welcome back to Northern Perspective, everyone. I'm Cypher. And I'm Fox. As I'm sure all of you probably know by now, question period today descended into utter chaos after Rachel Thomas and Pierre Polyev were ejected by House Speaker Greg Fergus. What you may not know is what happened right after that, as well as what a former NDP leader said about Fergus, and it wasn't positive. Let's take a look. That is what Canadians expect. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition... The minister is not work worth the drugs and death. His extreme and radical drug policy has increased overdose deaths in British Columbia by 380 percent. In the year following his decriminalization of crack, heroin and other hard drugs in hospitals, transit buses, coffee shops and parks where children play, there has been a record smashing 2,500 deaths. Will the Prime Minister accept the BC NDP's demand to recriminalize those drugs? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Speaker, I just answered that question. What hasn't been answered by the Leader of the Opposition is why he chooses to continue to court extreme right nationalist groups like Diagonal. He refuses to denounce these extremists who don't believe Canadians should coexist with each other. Instead, they call for war and tell people to follow uh, their instincts accordingly. The leader of the Conservative Party is actively courting the support of groups with white nationalist views. It is disturbing, and he needs to stand up and apologize now. So let's just be clear here. Trudeau was asked a question on the drug policy and the decriminalization of all of these hard drugs <laughs> that they worked with the BC government, the BC NDP government to implement. And it has gone, oh, wait a minute, what is that word? Haywire? Haywire, as everyone with a brain expected. Like, hello, what did you, what did you think would happen? But anyway, here we are. And so his response is to say, again, divide. He's the guy who says that Pierre's the one who divides, but Trudeau is essentially saying anyone who disagrees with him is a white nationalist or a misogynist or a racist. And they're not even worth talking to. That's the thing. He's saying that human beings, people who have a right to vote in this country, are not worth even stopping and speaking to and listening to their concerns. That's essentially what the Prime Minister is saying here. Right. So take from that what you will. Colleagues, so soon in question period, it is important that we try to control ourselves. I'll ask the Honourable Member from St. Albert, uh, Edmonton, please, to allow members to ask uh, the questions and members to respond. Um, the Honourable Member from St. Albert, Edmonton is who? Cooper? Michael Cooper. Right, I thought so. Michael so he's Cooper. scolding Cooper and Freeland's sitting there like a turkey. What did you say? That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's a good question. Nothing to her. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, I always uh, condemn extremism and racism, including from the guy who spent the first half of his adult life as a practicing racist, dressing up in hideous racist costumes so many times. Yeah. Position, uh, knows that to make an accusation directly at, a, at the character of a single person is not appropriate. And I'm going to ask all members to control themselves. Are you serious? So he's admonishing Pierre for what he said about Trudeau wearing blackface. But when Trudeau calls Pierre a white supremacist or that he's trying to court the vote of right white supremacists. That's totally fine. Right. And and yesterday when McKinnon was, was basically saying that, um, you know, Pierre was supporting 
you know, the death of children in schools. What planet are we living on? And the funny thing is, is uh, Pierre said the very same thing yesterday. Fergus said nothing. Yeah, because the media picked it up yesterday. There was a stir about it. So, well, of course, he doesn't want him repeating it again. You also got to wonder if, if Fergus got a call from, from, from his buddy who, who got him the speaker's job and said, hey, uh, you better be protecting me from those guys over there. They're meanies. You They're mean, bullies. You mean Trudeau. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition to rephrase this question and to start uh, for the talk. Mr. Speaker, I also condemn the extremism of a Prime Minister who gives hundreds of thousands of dollars of anti-racism money to a Jew hater who has proposed shooting Jews in the head. Yeah. I, condemn, I condemn a Prime Minister who allows the IRGC, which murdered 55 Canadians, to remain legal. And I condemn a Prime Minister who allows open use of crack, heroin, meth, and weapons in hospital rooms that threaten nurses and on school buses next to children. Will the Prime Minister reverse his extremist policies? And um, I have a feeling that uh, Fergus should have settled for the first answer. Yeah, <laughs> because, yeah. <laughs> uh, it made Trudeau look uh, even not as worse. bad at the first time. Yeah, it made him look even worse. Worse uh, the second time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but this is the thing, and 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 Pierre played that beautifully. Okay, fine. I'll I'll just I'll just rattle off some more facts because you you heard the first facts. It and that's the thing. Accusations. There's no accusation. It's a fact that Trudeau <laughs> dressed up in blackface. Yeah, it was a malicious compliance on Pierre's part. Yeah. The Right Honourable Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, the leader opposite is showing us exactly what shameful, spineless leadership looks like. So I just heard one of the conservatives yell out, get it together, Greg. I, I distinctly heard that. Surprised uh, that MP wasn't called out for using a name in question period. <laughs> right? Well, but here's the thing. So it's oh, it's not okay for Pierre to say that that Trudeau dressed up in racist garb and, and did all this other stuff. But it's okay for Trudeau to call Pierre spineless. And that he's actively courting the far right. Rules for thee, but not for me. And, and this is what the conservatives are, are fed up with. I heard, wow. do you have any idea what you're, and then, and then what, I couldn't hear. He said, do you have any idea what you're doing to, to Fergus? And the answer is, I think he knows exactly what he's doing. And this is what is pissing everybody off. Yeah, I don't think this is incompetence at this point anymore. No, and this is what this is what Shear had said before when they were calling on Speaker Fergus to resign. He said, "You've lost the confidence of the House." Well, this proves it right I mean, here. Look at everybody. Everybody's acting like a pack of rabid animals. Order. the honorable member from Lethbridge if she has problems with the chair that she should challenge the chair in a way but as she knows as the honorable member from Lethbridge knows that by challenging the chair is against the rules of this house I'll ask the honorable member to please to ask her to withdraw her remarks the chair is acting in a disgraceful manner I'm going to ask you will you you know what? Good on you. That was Rachel Thomas, everybody. Good on you. Because the chair is acting in a disgraceful manner. Absolutely he is. Like, this is this is blatant favoritism. There, there's no sugarcoating it. There's no ambiguity. It, there, it, this is blatant favoritism at this point. Well, let's read from the House of Commons rules. It says... Remarks directed specifically at another member which question that member's integrity, honesty, or character are not in order. 
So do you think that Trudeau calling Pierre spineless is is an attack on his character, perhaps? I would say so. Well, and then it goes on to say a member will be requested to withdraw offensive remarks, allegations, or accusations of impropriety directed towards another member. I don't recall Fergus telling Trudeau to withdraw his remarks towards Pierre. Oh, no, I don't either. Ms. Harder, I have to name you for disregarding the authority of the chair. Pursuant to authority granted to me by Standing Order 11, I order you to withdraw from the House and from any participation by video conference for the remainder of this day's sitting. Although we don't like it, um, Rachel Thomas, whose maiden name is Harder, uh, Fox just looked that up for us, and that's why she was... Uh, uh, Named as Ms. Harder. Yeah, because um, my guess is when she was initially sworn in, her name was Harder, so... But um, unfortunately, Fergus is correct in that you are not allowed to challenge the chair and, and say, you know, insult the chair. You're not allowed to do that. You can call a point of order, which to my understanding may have been more appropriate in this case um, because calling a, another member a name or insulting their integrity is out of order. So by calling a point of order, you are challenging that right but there definitely are situations where i would say um you can do the wrong thing for the right reason and i do think that this is one of those circumstances now back to the original point i'm going to ask the prime minister to please uh as I'd ask the uh, leader of the opposition to with to uh, we can start from again and to make sure that he does to start his question and to reframe it in a way that does not call into the character of an individual member of parliament. The honourable prime minister, right honourable prime minister, Mr. Speaker, uh, the leader opposite is showing us once again uh, what he will do to try and earn votes through personal attacks. He shakes the hands of a leader of a white nationalist group, then goes to actively court the support of the group's members and thinks he can get a Away with it. This is a group that advocates for violence against 2SLGBTQI plus Canadians, against Hindus and Sikhs, uh, against uh, Muslims and Jews. Diagonal stands against everything we stand for as Canadians, and yet he will not denounce them or what they stand for. That is shameful, Mr. Speaker. You know what's shameful? Is that the Liberals have been begging Pierre to get into a fight with them over the capital gains tax and Pierre has refused to engage them on that because that's what Trudeau wants them to do. So instead, Trudeau is going after some people that were on the side of the road protesting the carbon tax. Well, you know how much Trudeau hates protesters. Yeah, but that's the thing. Again, anyone who doesn't agree with Trudeau, he calls names. He calls racists. He calls misogynists. He calls white supremacists. It's it, and this is the guy that says Pierre's the one that is sowing division in this country. Pierre doesn't attack groups of Canadians. He only attacks Trudeau. That's it. I have never heard Pierre attack a group of Canadians. He has commented on protests and he's commented on remarks and that he disagrees with them and he thinks they're abhorrent. Yeah, I've heard him criticize terrorists, but those are people who actually kill people. Yeah, but he, you know, he talks about the views of people and that he completely condemns them, but he doesn't call them names, unlike yours truly. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, that, like everything else he says, is false. He uses fears and fear and falsehood and this latest distraction because he doesn't want to face the fact that he has become so extreme and radical that even the BC NDP is distancing himself, themselves from his decriminalization of crack, heroin, meth, and other hard drugs in hospital rooms, causing nurses to have to stop breastfeeding their babies for fear that their contaminated air might end up in the breast milk of the baby. Why won't he ban these drugs? The Right Honourable Prime Minister. He 
will still won't condemn these groups. Any leader that needs the support of a far-right white nationalist group to fundraise and get closer to power does not deserve elected office. This is exactly, this is a 19-year career politician who knows exactly what he's doing and thinks he can get away with it. It was a choice to pander to white nationalists, not an accident, and it is a choice to continue to not condemn them and condemn everything they stand for in his quest for votes. Um, of the two, you Trudeau, he doesn't need to go looking for votes at this point. <laughs> Just saying. You need, you're the one that should join the dumpster diving uh, network in Toronto to dumpster dive for votes. You're the one who needs them. Pierre just heard on the news that there was a group protesting the carbon tax on the side of the road. You know what he didn't hear? That there was a bunch of white nationalists, white supremacists protesting the carbon tax on the side of the road. Like, are you kidding me? But this is what the liberals do. They make crap up. And they have nothing on Pierre, so they literally have to make crap up. And, and Pierre is so skillfully, he's not answering the question, which is just enraging Trudeau. Yeah, because it's not his job. That's question period, and he's the opposition. Right, but not only that. I mean, he doesn't have to dignify these crazy accusations. I'm going to ask the honourable member for the second time from St. Albert, Edmonton, to please withhold his comments until he has the floor. <laughs> Somebody give that man a high five. Cooper, I mean, oh, not Fergus. Cooper, yeah. That was, that was hilarious. Just yelling over at Trudeau, you're done. <laughs> you're done. Sounds like he has the same opinion of his uh, number of votes as we do. The Honourable Leader of the Opposition. Mr. Speaker, it is a choice for him to implement extremist policies that have taken the lives of 2,500 British Columbians every single year. Since the NDP has asked him to reverse course on his and formerly their radical policy, 22 British Columbians have died of drug overdoses. But he continues to allow those drugs to kill the people in our hospitals and on our public transit. When will we put an end to this wacko policy by this wacko Prime Minister? No, no, no. That is not... Ex there are a couple of things which are going on here today which is not acceptable. And I ask all members, please, to keep themselves, to control themselves. I'm going to ask two things. One, I'm going to ask the Honourable uh, Leader of the Opposition to withdraw uh, that term, which is not considered parliamentary. Mr. Speaker, I replace Wacko with extremist. He is an extremist. The Honourable Member to please... I'm going to ask the Leader of the Opposition once again to just withdraw that comment. Extremist... what? He wants him to withdraw... Okay, so first he wanted to, to withdraw Wacko. And then he's asking him to withdraw Extremist. Let's see how this plays out. And I'll invite the Honourable Member... to please withdraw that comment and simply withdraw that comment. I'll replace it with radical no, I'm a, policy. I am not asking to replace. I'm asking the honourable member to just simply withdraw. Mr. Speaker, I replace the word wacko with extremist. I'm going to ask the Honourable Leader of the Opposition one last time 
So please withdraw that comment and simply withdraw that comment. I simply withdraw and replace with the aforementioned adjective. Mr. Polyev, I have to name you for disregarding the authority of the chair. Pursuant to the authority granted to me by Standing Order 11, I order you to withdraw from the House and from any participation by video conference for the remainder of this day's sitting. Okay, so this is a big deal, folks. When you are naming the leader of His Majesty's official opposition to leave the House, that is significant, especially, especially when he was re he was replacing his adjectives, and and Fergus. Sorry, I'm just so incredulous by this, and Fergus. What he wanted is he wanted to control exactly what Pierre was doing. Well, no, you must withdraw the comment. Like, who cares if he replaces it with radical? Who cares? Who cares? You wasted so much time there, Fergus. Move on. But this is the thing. You are not fair when it comes to this. You are biased. That's why Rachel Thomas called you out. And you named her. And Pierre was referring to a policy and referring to the person who implemented that policy as radical. It is a radical policy. Right. It absolutely is a radical policy. Who in their right mind would go, wow, we have lots of people dying from drug overdoses. Instead of, you know, investing in therapy and investing in supports and, and treatment and rehab for people who are addicted to drugs, let's just give them drugs that we pay for. That'll, that'll fix it. That's nuts. So what happened next? So what seems to be happening here is Fergus is getting blasted by the conservatives. That's my guess. So that is the clerk, if I'm not mistaken. From the table, yeah. yeah. And now we see what happened. So what ended up happening is in protest, the entire conservative party walked out because of the bias of Greg Fergus. It was absolutely a disgusting display of a guy that we are not surprised has bias because he's been proven to have bias before. Right. Last time he displayed such flagrant bias, we wrote a letter and asked for his removal. Right. So this doesn't end here because obviously the media got a hold of it. And uh, the good lady over at CTV, Power Play, Vashi Kapilos, ended up pulling together a panel of people to talk about this. So we're going to hear from a couple of them on what they thought. Uh, Lisa, was this a big deal, what took part, what took place today? Yeah, it was a big deal. Uh, probably not for the reasons that some would think. It's a big deal, number one, because the speaker should not have done what he did. He waited in. He made a mistake. The uh, leader of the opposition clearly withdrew. He should have left it at that and moved on, but he decided to make a point out of it. And I think the other issue is the fact that the prime minister simply would not answer any questions around a very serious matter with respect to drug use, open drug use in British Columbia, and, and a request from the premier of British Columbia to deal with this decriminalization issue, which has taken hold and is very concerning. The prime minister, instead of addressing the issue, decided to attack the leader of the opposition. And then we ends up with the leader of the opposition booted out of the house as he's just trying to bring up the issues around the drug decriminalization and having the debate. Kat Bashi, you said at the beginning it came out of a debate. There is no debate on this policy because the liberals were absolutely trying to duck the debate and the speaker 
help them today. And I think that's the key point. The speaker helped them duck that debate. The speaker is supposed to be impartial. The speaker is supposed to be nonpartisan. The speaker doesn't even get a vote in the House when they are casting votes for motions and bills and things of that nature. The only time he gets a vote is to break a tie. The speaker absolutely should not be interfering in the the procedures of the house the the speaker think of him like a referee at a hockey game he's not supposed to you know pick up a stick and start playing he's just supposed to make sure that the other players play fairly right he's not supposed to put uh, his hands on the scale of justice here so you know the fact that he has been so biased towards the concern it's not even you know, a point of debate it's blatant and this lady um, was a former deputy uh, conservative leader. So she understands what's going on and she sees plainly what happened during question period. A couple of things out of that, Tom. Uh, first, it's true that there were direct questions asked of the prime minister on BC's ask essentially to recriminalize drugs in public spaces, and he did not answer them. He did first call uh, the he qu qualified the leadership of Pierre Polyev as quote spineless. The response from Pierre Polyev was to uh, call both the policy of decriminalization writ large pursued by the federal government, in his view, alongside the prime minister himself, wacko. That's basically how it unfolded. And then the speaker asked him to retract that word. He said, I'd retract it, but I will replace it with extremists. And then the speaker decided to uh, kick him out, basically, of the House of Commons, and all the conservatives followed. What, what is your interpretation of how big of a deal that is? I agree completely with what Lisa said at the beginning of her answer, that Pierre Poilievre simply offered up the exact wording that Greg Fergus had asked for. I simply withdraw. And then he didn't repeat the other words. He says, and I replaced them with what I said before. That was the exit ramp that the leader of the opposition, the leader of her Majesty, his majesty's loyal opposition mm -hmm. in the House, is an extraordinarily important institution. Before you get to the point that Greg Fergus got to today, you've got to go through a heck of a lot of other steps. This was not only precipitous. For me, it was manifestly, obviously partisan. And I don't come yeah. at that lightly. I remember when Greg Fergus got caught making a very partisan video. I was one of the people who defended him. I, you know, I've been a House leader in, in Ottawa. I, I was a deputy House leader both in power and in opposition in Quebec City, where it could be very rough and tumble. But I've never seen anything like this, Vashi. Never in my career have I seen such, in my view, blatant partisanship from a speaker. I think that he's disqualified himself from the position, and I am indeed one of the people who defended him. When people were calling for his head after that video, I said, it's a rookie mistake. Let him prove that he can be autonomous, independent, act you know, fairly with everyone. Today, he failed completely. And no surprise, of course, the Bloc Québécois was applauding the speaker for going after the Conservatives, as was the NDP. It's in the natural order of things, but overall, it was a an awful performance by Speaker Greg Fergus. He, he just lost control today. Now, the Conservatives walking out poses a simple problem for them. How and when and on what conditions do they walk back in? Because they're never going to get a majority of people voting to get rid of Fergus. But Fergus should do the right thing and simply step down. He cannot, with any credibility, based on my many years' experience in both provincial legislature and in the House of Commons, he cannot continue to do that job credibly himself. He made a huge mistake. When Polyev said, I simply withdraw, he should have ended it there. Instead, he went after the leader of the opposition. Unbelievable. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. That's pretty powerful words coming from the former NDP leader, right? Who politically is much closer to the Liberals than he is to the Conservatives. And he also... He was right. He was one of the people that was defending Fergus in the fall. For him to go from, no, this is just a rookie mistake, to this guy should absolutely resign after this. He's disqualified himself from the position. Um, that's that's something. Like, that's what I pay attention to. That's extremely significant. Like, you listen to, you know, um, the, uh, the, the lady, Lisa, who was talking about, you know, how... Fergus was biased and going after the leader of the opposition. Yeah, you listen to that. She, you know, she aligns to the conservatives. But Mulcair doesn't, right? He doesn't. So for him to say that, that is very significant. But you know what? He's absolutely right. 100% in this. Now, he's right. The problem is, is the NDP and the bloc, you know, they're not going to uh, uh, team up on Fergus on this. But... Um, this should. This is absolutely embarrassing. Well, I can't believe 
how little control he had over the house. Well, because nobody respects him, right? And that's the problem. And that's what Sheer was was warning him. Well, because he doesn't deserve to sit in that chair. He's never done a job where he's had to be nonpartisan. He's never chaired a committee before. He's never been deputy speaker. He's never shown any interest in being the speaker. And then he just gets like thrown into this position. And he had, let's not forget, he did have an ethics violation before he even became speaker. Then he had that fiasco back in December where he wore his speaker robes to, to record a video for a partisan event. And everybody, again, was, oh, no, no, you know, it's just a rookie mistake. He didn't know any better, blah, blah, blah. He's been in this role for, what, five months now? He should know better. And and look what he did today. Yeah, it's absolutely disgusting. And he should resign and uh, I don't know. It's going to be interesting, folks, because things are heating up huge, huge on this. Yeah, it was super spicy in the house today. Like, like I've never, I don't think I've ever seen it that bad. And it, Canada cannot go on like this. Like, we cannot continue if our elected officials are going to be at each other's throats like this. Right. So, and and the problem is, is Trudeau's doing everything he can to get votes. But everything he tries, he ends up with a big fat zero. And <laughs> Trudeau attacking Pierre today, the Conservatives won. They won because what it demonstrated is that the, spe the Speaker is completely biased towards his party, which he's not allowed to be, but he demonstrated that clear as day today. And so now Trudeau and the Liberals have yet another scandal on their hands. So it's going to be very interesting to see how the rest of this week goes, as well as when we, we ever get to the budget vote. That's going to be interesting in itself. So, so buckle up, everybody. This is going to be a bumpy ride.